This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we are doing a little comparison. We're looking at Uniqlo's impossibly priced $50 Japanese selvage denim jeans versus a very famous Japanese brand's $160 selvage denim jeans versus Levi's $260 selvage jeans. I am wearing the Fob Factory Pullover. It's 14 ounce denim made on Toyota GL3 shuttle looms. It's amazing and I got it from Haku Clothing. They're very nice. I actually asked them if they wanted to send it to me and they said yes. Can you just mention Haku Clothing? And I said yes I can. So go to Haku Clothing if you're looking for any Japanese denim. But you may be thinking, why am I wearing no jeans when this video is about Japanese denim jeans? That's because I don't want to become a full denim daddy yet. What the heck is going on? Because there's a huge price discrepancies and why aren't we all just shopping at Uniqlo? And also, I said it was good, but is it actually good? This is the second video in a row where I'm going to tell you for some reason I still can't figure out why my hair is so greasy even though I shower every day. So sorry that I look like a greasy fat pig. Okay. Uniqlo, probably the best deal you can get in selvage denim on planet Earth. Let's talk about why. So this is all selvage denim, and you're probably used to hearing that if you want cheap selvage denim, you go to places like China, you go Turkey, you go Bangladesh, they can make a ton of cheap selvage denim, but Japan is not that. Japan is all artistry and this and that, and they would never make cheap denim, and you'd be absolutely wrong, because they do. Uniqlo kind of says it without saying it. They say that their denim was specifically developed with Kahara Mills, and I'm sorry I'm going to pronounce a lot of Japanese words wrong. I am trying though. They say the denim was specifically specifically developed with them, and usually in the Japanese denim world that means very particular things. The staple length of the cotton should be this long, the cotton should feel like this or should feel like that. What Uniqlo means is they say, hey, Kahara Mills, we need these jeans to come in under $50, what's the cheapest selvage denim that you could possibly make? So when you think about these massive denim mills in Turkey and Bangladesh and China and everything, Kahara Mills is essentially the Japanese equivalent of that. In any Japanese city, it is estimated that one out of every two pairs of jeans are made from Kahara Mills denim. The biggest thing, and I'm not gonna go over this a lot because I've done two videos about it that you could check out up and up, but country of origin affects the cost of products a lot. So these are made in Bangladesh. Truthfully, and to be totally honest, if you didn't have a burning passion for raw or selvage denim, you could get these jeans and be done because they are great, they are selvage, they are cheap, and that's it. But you were kind of missing the entire point of getting cool Japanese raw selvage denim because what's so fun about these Levi's and these TCB jeans is that there's mistakes, there's hand stitching, there's techniques taken from the 50s and 40s and 60s all melded into something that's not here on the Uniqlo jeans. I gotta be honest, it's like 85 degrees outside and double denim. It's not the most breathable thing in the world. I just washed them, so they're a little bit small. Levi's 1967 LVC 505s. We're in the big leagues now. Picture this, a world where the internet does not exist. The world was like that for over 100 years, but now the internet does exist and we have really cool things like LimeWire and Napster. But the internet is just so much more than posting on MySpace about how much you love the new Iron Snail video or Googling if you should tuck in your shirt because it's not that flattering for your torso. The internet is a place of business, a place of creativity, a place where you can do anything that you want whenever you want. So if I Google your name, the first thing that pops up shouldn't be your Instagram page or what you just got at Blockbuster. It should be your writing, your new business, your photography, your videography, your illustration. There there are so many things and so many reasons why you need a website and Squarespace is the perfect place for that because you don't have to learn to code. All you have to do is sign up for the trial, see if you like it, and if you do, use my code IRONSNAIL to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. And Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to make a website with their Fluid Engine where you can just drag and drop things wherever you want. You can schedule blog posts, you can have a point of sale system if you have a physical store. The limits are endless, but you need to start somewhere, so start there at Squarespace. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You could probably tell from the fading, but these jeans are my jeans. So there's a question of why did I buy these jeans when in like two minutes I'm going to talk about technically a better pair of jeans that are $100 cheaper. Quick note, yes, Levi's are more expensive and it's for a bunch of different reasons, but one thing that can't be ignored and that is not Levi's fault is that importing Japanese products and Japanese denim to the US does 
incur fees and duties and stuff like that. So they can't control that price hike, and that's why you see a lot of times denim from Japan is more expensive in US shops. Okay, so the two easiest things to knock out first are one, these are actually made, cut and sewn in Japan, which drives the price up, and two, these are not meant to be bought by hundreds of thousands of people like Uniqlo's, they're meant to be much smaller batch. So Levi is ordering a smaller amount of things, cost goes up there too, and to be honest, they can charge a little more just because that's how we're thinking. The other thing is, remember when I said Uniqlo kind of says these were specially developed by Kahara Mills and Uniqlo together, and that reason was to cut down on price? A little different here. Instead of trying to get it for the lowest price possible, Levi's is trying to get their denim as close as they can to be exact reproductions of the specific denim that they're selling. So they have 1947 denim, they have 1950s denim. This is 1967 505 fabric. Levi's also does specialty hardware per era of jeans they are producing. So if you look at these jeans, for example, there is a Talon zipper, not a YKK zipper. And most notably, they do this for every single era of their jeans. So if you look at Levi's LBC 1937s, you'll notice a single copper rivet right here, which was then removed. Why was it removed? Because when cowboys and people were sitting around a fire in the 30s, the fire heated up the rivet that was right near their the LVC line, Levi's starts to introduce, through the use of heritage denims, slub and nep and kind of even fur, I guess. And these jeans don't have that because they're from 1967, so denim was kind of getting perfected then. So they don't have a ton of character, but this line does have very interesting denims in it. Okay, and now the moment you've all been waiting for, the Japanese beasts, T C. B. Something else to note, these jeans are a steal at this price, but the price does move with the relationship between the US dollar and the Japanese yen, or wherever you're buying these from, so it could move and fluctuate. Oh yeah, I got a lot of room here. There's a whole subgenre of Japanese denim brands that only recreate vintage Levi's jeans and jackets to the most minute detail ever. TCB is not that, taking care of business, AKA two cat brand, but they are one of the coolest Japanese denim brands ever, and they come in at an astoundingly good price, especially when compared to Levi's. So if we go back to Levi's LVC for a second, obviously we have different eras of jeans that all have different things in them that make them cool. Instead of sticking those into boxes, and saying, well, jeans from the 40s have these and jeans from the 60s have these, TCB, essentially as a company, takes things from all these different eras and puts them together on jeans. And they kind of make Levi reproduction jeans, but a little broader. The buttons on my TCB 1950s jeans are made of iron, and you can tell because the top button is actually starting to rust. Most people would say, that's a flaw. And you know why? Because it is. But it's still very cool that you have something else on your jeans that reacts over time and changes, which is why a lot of people like raw denim because it fades and looks cooler as you wear it more. And if you go on TCB's website, they say, we've carefully studied a vintage piece TCB owns to every single detail from the shape to the yarn count for each seams. Also, you'll notice that TCB goes to extensive lengths to never mention the word Levi's, and that is because Levi's is a very litigious company that will sue you into oblivion if you do anything that they have copyrighted. Levi's replicates fabric from the 40s and 50s. We don't know to what length. TCB and other repo brands do it to an insanely precise level where you can guarantee this is really as close as you're gonna get to denim from that era. Except, interestingly, TCB uses Zimbabwe cotton on these jeans, which is supposedly the best cotton in the world. It's some of the longest staple cotton fiber that you can get, which means it's stronger, it's softer, it's all these fantastic things, which I'm 150% sure Levi's was not using in the 1950s, but that's the push and pull of TCB. Besides all of that, this denim is unsanforized. You are definitely used to sanforized denim, which basically presses the denim so that way when you wash them, it doesn't shrink a ton. This denim, if you got it raw, would shrink like 10%, an absolute ton. But what that does is it retains a lot of the interesting character from the denim, and it's much more authentic. So there's leg twist on the left leg of these jeans, which a lot of people don't like. I actually really like. It's exactly what it sounds like, where the leg of your jean is just twisted a little bit, and that's due to the shrinking process and the uneven tension on the yarns from how they were woven. Maybe this is too exhaustive and you don't care, but there's there's more things to talk about. All of the seams on these jeans that are chain stitched, and you can tell they're chain stitched because the stitching looks like a chain, are done with a vintage machine called a Union Special, which is no longer made and hasn't been made for a very long time. So you're thinking, how do they upkeep these machines? Well, they have a bunch of them, and if a part breaks, they try to find that part in another machine that's not working, and they switch parts and so on and so 
forth. But the reason they do this is because the seams pucker in a specific way that denim nerds call roping and gives it this really beautiful pattern that looks like rope. So with all that being said, you're probably asking the obvious question. Michael, if there are jeans being made this cool that are $100 cheaper than Levi's LVCs, why can Levi's charge that much? And there's three answers. There's actually four because like I said, the US trade agreements and the yen strength is really important. Number one is, Nobody knows. Number two, like I said in my Japanese denim versus Walmart video, Levi's is paying for marketing, for photography, for rent, for a million, million trillion things. And the third most important reason is called the Levi's tax. And what is the Levi's tax? This is the Levi's tax. Rivets on pants, first invented by Levi's. The red tab on the back of pants, first invented by Levi's. Red ticker on selvage IDs, first done by Cone Mills for Levi's. The little patch on the back that is beige with red, first done by Levi's. The jeans, really popular jeans, first done by Levi's. Everything was done first by Levi's, and because of that, everything that is jeans is essentially derived from Levi's. And if you look at all the details on TCB, it's from Levi's. So, in conclusion, is Uniqlo selvage denim worth it? Yes, there is no better selvage denim deal in the world that I know of than Uniqlo selvage denim. Is Levi's LVC denim worth it at the end of the day? To be honest, it's not worth it unless you are a mega fan of the Levi's brand and no other brand will do because then you have to get that brand. But if you're willing to look at other brands like TCB, Sugarcane, Unbranded, Naked and Famous, Oni, Pure Blue Japan, there's a million other different avenues that you can go where you get a little more bang for your buck. Anyways though, those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I am off to Italy. I am officiating my friend's wedding. So I have a lot of work to do. I'll see you very, very soon. I think we're talking about boots. Okay, nice to, nice to have you stop